Nietzsche's Will to Power. Hello, this is Chris speaking, Shores of Infinity, with a video about Nietzsche's Will to Power, which has been very much understood. Anyway, Nietzsche is probably the philosopher who has been most under misunderstood, not understood, but misunderstood in this thing with the will to power more so than anything else he talked about. The important thing about Nietzsche is that he was a very spiritual person on the spiritual path to enlightenment. Although back then spiritual had a different meaning and enlightenment had a different meaning. So what he did, he declared religion to be dead, God to be dead, philosophy to be at its end. Why? Because he realized that all religions and all philosophies or at least the ones he had encountered, had nothing to do with spirituality, with enlightenment. They were looking for some partial truth and then calling it truth. They were not looking deep behind what is actually happening. Unfortunately, he didn't get into contact with C.G. Jung. I don't understand why, but that probably would have helped him. Anyway, all he saw in the late 19th century was decline and decadence and mediocrity. The natural sciences were on the way up and logic was on its way up. But really to look deep into the darkness, what we call coral in spur dynamics, nobody was talking about that. Like Buddha, Nietzsche wasn't interested in theories. He wanted something that worked, some practical philosophy, which is, of course, what we now call spirituality, in its ideal form at least. You can make a theory of anything, as we see in Buddhism. Now, Buddhism used to be a very practical religion. Now it's also, in many parts, it's very theoretically, it's just a religion. It produces Buddhists, not Buddhas. And this is exactly the thing that bothered Nietzsche. You know, all the philosophies and religions he knew about produced followers, not people who strolled boldly ahead. He thought you needed courage, not cowardice. So what does that have to do with power? Well, if you declare the religions, which is in Europe mostly Christianity, to be dead, and God not to have a direct influence. So you can pray to him, her, it, but him, he, she, it will not uh, intervene. Yeah, probably Nietzsche would have gotten along quite well with Jed McKenna, who says that um, the divine is watching the human show as entertainment and as a learning experience how it feels to be limited. So why would it intervene? So the only omnipotent being or thingy out there doesn't intervene. So what's the point in religion? Same with philosophy. If philosophy is no way out of this powerlessness, this this helplessness, this impotence, then what it's good for? For nothing. The words power and also the German word Macht have the same meaning. It means being able to do something. So if religion and philosophy are not enabling you to do something about the misery you experience every day, then what? The same goes for the word will. To will something or to have a will. It's also a German word, Wille. It means striving to do something. So both words, will and power, are very active words. They point towards an action. But in the modern society, we are directionless. Even if we had the will and the power to do something, we wouldn't know what. 
Where to go? What to do? Where's the aim? Now suppose you set as your aim enlightenment, reunification with the divine, awakening, to see the truth, whatever you want to call it. Then how to do it? Every seeker sooner or later comes to the conclusion that what is happening here is some kind of movie in which he or she might be a protagonist, but not the director. And definitely not the one who wrote the script. So we're leading a scripted life and we can watch it and not take it seriously anymore, but that doesn't change that we are not in control of it. So actually we can't do shit, it's just happening to us. The best we can hope for is watch it at this first step of awakening. The hope is that later in enlightenment we are able to do something. We are able to influence this dream or movie in some way, or at least to understand the script somehow. So we are totally powerless and the only thing that could help us won't And sure as hell, there's no point in waiting for society to catch up. In Nietzsche's view, it went down the drain anyway. So all is left is you. Like you, said. The courage to stand alone. And in this courage to stand alone, there's a battle. There's a war, an internal war. And partly also an external war. Between surrender and defense, defense against, not the dark arts, but defense against misery and pain and un unhappiness. Most people are not happy with their lives. So there is a strong urge to somehow move from unhappiness to happiness, or at least to less pain. And at some point, this urge is paired with the realization that you have to do this by yourself. No one will help you. There's no one there to help you. No government, no teachers, no gurus, no doctors, no scientists, no medications or drugs, nothing. Sure, they are friends, but they cannot do this for you. And also the divine or God or whatever you want to call it, it will not do it for you. So to stand up, to get up and do things in spite of this adversity, in spite of unhappiness and difficulties, and move towards the unlikely or almost impossible goal of enlightenment, you need a will. And this is what Nietzsche calls the will to power. It's not political power. It has been misused a lot for political power. No, it's not about political power. It's to get some vestige of control back into your life. The power to do something, not just to drift along. Nietzsche's will to power is the same as UG's the courage to stand alone. It's the same what Jed McKenna calls spiritual warfare. There seems to be a war going on here, an internal war be between your conscious and unconscious, also an external war between you and Maya. And there are situations where it's better to surrender, and there are situations where you have to get up and act, or at least pretend to act or try to act in situations of danger, of obstacles, of difficulties. You can say, of course, okay, fuck it, it's too difficult, all odds are against me, I just stay home and wait until I die, then 
I hope this nightmare is over. But who knows if that works? This is a very passive approach. Nietzsche was for an active approach. Do it anyway. Get some power back into your life. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Thank you to all my patrons. Thank you for joining me as a patron. Don't forget to give the thumbs up and hit the bell button. And thank you for sharing the videos with your friends and see you soon.